Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. I'm Manuel and today we are taking a look at the assembly of my CubeSat EPS. Also, I'm thrilled to announce that this video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay. So in the previous video I had just finished the layout for the EPS, the buck module and the solar charger modules and I had sent them out to PCBWay, obviously, for manufacturing. After the video went live, a bunch of you actually reached out with some very useful ideas on what could be improved in future revisions of these boards. And thank you very much for that. Please keep the feedback coming. Together with what I learned from assembling and testing these, I will design a hopefully more mature revision to next year. Also next year, I plan to start a Discord server so that um, discussing all of this becomes a bit easier. If you would prefer a different platform than Discord, um, please leave a comment because this is not set in stone yet. So let's go ahead and have a look at these PCBs now. For all boards that will need reflow soldering, I got the ENIG surface finish and I chose white solder mask so the components would show up better on video. Now on the EPS here we have these four large apertures in the center where the charging and buck modules will go, but I think the most remarkable feature here are these pretty fine pitched M.2 connector footprints that turned out really well. I would also like to call out the castellated holes on the edges here because the edge plating has turned out just the way I hoped. So this is a four layer board and I paid $124 for five pieces plus $10 for the stencil. This tiny 23 by 23 millimeter board is the charger module. So on the top we see the LGA where the micro module will go and on the bottom there is actually nothing because this is just a uh, two layer board. I paid $55 for five of these and I think the main factor driving the cost here are the castellated holes on the edges. That is also why this board could not be penalized. The buck module is the exact same size but it is a four layer board with a BJ footprint and VSN pad and also there are some components on the back. The cost of this one was $208 for 10 pieces. This battery contact PCB is a very simple two layer board and I got five of them for $5. The fun thing here is that we can use the same board on either end of the battery pack as there is a Y plus and a Y minus side. I also got these battery bay inserts for 18650 batteries CNC machined out of PEEK which is a vacuum safe engineering plastic. So as a matter of fact these are the very first parts of this project which could actually be flown into space. Which I find kind of amazing that you can just upload the CAD and get them back in a couple of weeks. Eight of these were $285 so $35 a pop. I mean, it's not exactly cheap, but it's crazy affordable for a space grade part. All in all, I think PCBWay did an amazing job with these boards, and I would also be saying that if they weren't a sponsor because I have been ordering stuff from them since 2022, and I am designing everything in this project so that it can be uh, ordered from them, so that's the electronics and the CNC parts, mainly because they offer low quantity manufacturing at a very reasonable price. By the way, if you want to order a board with castellated holes from PCBWay and you find yourself on the PCB Instant Quote page, you can scroll down to Customized Services and Advanced Options, twirl that open and choose Edge Plating. I forgot to do that on my first board, but luckily my sales rep Remy caught the mistake and reached out to me. So while this stuff was being manufactured, I ordered all of the components from DigiKey and Mauser and then I started with assembling the solar charger module. I did that with a tried and tested method of surrounding the PCB with others of the same thickness, aligning the stencil and keeping it in place with masking tape. I did all of that on a solid piece of aluminum plate which is reasonably flat. I know there are more sophisticated ways for pasting a board but this is the most accessible way I know of so I wanted to give this a try first. Then after placing the parts I reflowed it on my mini hot plate and this worked just fine. I tried to follow the recommended temperature curve for my solder paste, but of course you can't really do that without a proper reflow oven. So far I've only had time for a quick and dirty test of this module by soldering on some pin headers, supplying power and connecting a battery pack, and it did charge the battery pack. So this seems to work, but of course it will need proper testing. I went through the same assembly routine for the buck module with its BJ micro module, and this also seemed to reflow just fine on the mini hot plate. But that's where the trouble started. Right when I wanted to hand solder the resistors and capacitors on the back side, my trusty TS100 soldering iron just died. Um, I suspect some part of the cartridge retaining mechanism broke off and anyways I couldn't get it to work again. So I had to fall back on my old and slightly underpowered TS80. 
And I did manage to solder on the strapping resistors, but for the life of me, I could not get the capacitors to properly solder. My theory here is that the large tantalum caps on the front acted like massive heat sinks, and I just didn't have the power to fight that. So unfortunately, this will have to wait until I get a new soldering iron. Next up was the EPS board itself. Since there are eight press fit pin receptacles on this, I thought I'd start by pressing these in first. I did that by mounting a pin punch in my drill press and this actually worked great. Because the battery contact PCB pins would connect from the bottom, I also pressed them in from that side. The only problem is that I didn't really consider the fact that the receptacles stick out by a millimeter or so, which meant that I couldn't use the solder paste stencil anymore on this board. So lesson learned here and I moved on to doing the other part of the assembly first. In the meantime, I had found a great deal on a used Mantis compact microscope because I had found that placing more than a few of these tiny components was a bit of a strain on the eyes. Also, I had finally put on my big boy pants and bought some solder fume extraction, which was long overdue. For pasting the EPS board, I did the same thing as before, although it was a bit sketchy. As you may know, you are supposed to paste the whole board in one continuous motion with steady speed, angle and pressure from top to bottom, basically pulling towards you. Now I freely admit that I am not great at this and the first time around it was a bit of a mess. So for the second try I added more painter's tape and squeegeed the four sides on the board separately from the inside out and this worked okay. It's not perfect but I think it will do. Let's talk about the tools and materials used here for a moment. So the solder paste I am using is this one from Chipquick and I also got some tacky flux from them. Tool-wise, I use these two tweezers for placing parts and just a spatula for pushing them around. The squeegee I actually also got from PCBWay for 3 bucks. They have a little shop for various stuff that they call the module store and being able to order the squeegee together with the PCBs came in really handy. With the board pasted, I moved on to placing the components, which went pretty well. The interactive bomb I exported out of KiCad was a major help here. I paid extra attention to not accidentally moving any of the components or paste and I found if I kind of tried to breathe more evenly and consciously, it steadies the hands a bit. I started with placing the passives first and the ICs last. Also I found I was faster not using the microscope for the passives, but it made a huge difference for aligning the ICs. Really so much better. And it also was great for looking everything over and tweaking some alignments before reflowing. So for reflowing, I whipped out the bigger hot plate, aligned the fume extraction hose and just gave it a go. Again, I was trying to follow the temperature profile as best as I could. So while that was going, I thought I'd put its sibling hot plate next to it so I could just move the board over to get it off the heat. When the board was cooked, I used a steel ruler to gingerly notch the board over and that's when disaster struck. I somehow slipped with the ruler and wiped two of the beefy load switches right off their pads along with some of their passives. As you can imagine, messing up at the very last second after spending several hours to get to that point was a bit of a bummer. So while surprisingly staying somewhat calm, I decided to move the board back onto the hot plate again. And when the solder paste was liquid again, I kind of fumbled the two large ICs back onto their pads and uh, removed all of the stray passives. So after that, um, I moved the board to the cold plate, this time without incident. Sorry for the bad footage here, my mind wasn't really on that at the moment. Replacing the messed up passives with my TSAD was a bit of a struggle, but the whole ordeal could have turned out much worse. So the lesson learned here is that I need a tried and tested method of getting the board off the hot plate before I even put it there. So this is where we are at now. I think this board actually turned out okay for a first try. There is some flux residue that I still need to clean up and uh, oh yeah, for this component here I have used the wrong footprint but I ordered the component with this footprint and I will just solder it on later. Speaking of soldering, I have not done the backside yet as I am still waiting on the new soldering iron. But I may finally press fit those receptacles in the meantime. And of course, we won't know if any of this even works or how it performs before I test it, so there's a lot more work to do. But just as a quick preview, this is how everything goes together and fits in the EPS bay. So you would start by putting in two of the EPS bay inserts and as they are identical, um, it doesn't really matter which one goes where. Then you would add your batteries in the correct orientation and then you would push in the two battery contact PCBs. These ones here don't have their uh, contact ohms and pins yet. And then you just add two more EPS bay inserts and four of the spacers. 
These ones are actually just FDM printed, but in the final product, they would also be machined from PEK. Then on top of that, you add the EPS board and secure it with four M3 nuts and bolts. And finally, just to see what it would look like, and also for the thumbnail, I'm going to put some of the modules on top and also add two of these Macromod interconnect boards, which are going to be a subject for next season. So my friends, this is it for the first year of Build a Cube set. As some of you may know, I'm taking a break from uploading new episodes until February 1st of 2025. I am not going to stop working on the project in that time, but I'm just taking a break from making new content. I would like to thank all of you very, very much for all of your kind words and your support and frankly your enthusiasm. I didn't think that so many people would be interested in this and it means a lot to me that you are. And also a huge thanks to PCBWay for coming on as my first sponsor. So next year is going to be wild as we tackle the avionics and sending back telemetry over LoRa and hopefully launch one of these to the stratosphere with a high altitude balloon. I hope you stick around for season two. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next year.